Hey guys, it's Mo from Mo in the Deep End, and this is part of the whole, you know, covering a little bit of current events, a little bit of crime, a little bit of shenanigans, if you will. I had this email come to me and I thought, oh my gosh, if you are a true crime nut, which believe me, all of us are, I think that, or if you wandered in here and you're not a yet, nut yet, you may have experienced or, you know, watched a documentary about Charles Manson and, you know, the Manson family killings, the Tate LaBianca killings. You may have read the book. You may have watched the Joe Rogan experience where the guy said it was all the CIA. I mean, listen, Manson family stuff was kind of my gateway into the true crime stuff when I was 12. It may have freaked my mother out just a whole lot, so... Sorry, mom. It was just interesting because I may or may not have thought, hmm, it'd be really interesting to, uh, you know, influence a bunch of people to do weird stuff. I mean, not killing, but like weird stuff. I don't know. It, honestly, let's just, let's just get to the article because you know I would be a tangent engaged. So this is the article. I figured we would read it together. I have not read it uh, because I wanted to get my genuine reactions. Because, listen, y'all, I tried. I I am like the worst example of a Christian. I want to hold grudges and all the things like total honesty. I am not the standard bearer. So I'm trying to let my inner Steve Gosney out, you know, the merciful and redemptive arc. She's still kind of a C word that murdered a bunch of people. And I feel like, hmm, I don't know. Do I want to let her out? But let's read while we look at canned cranberries. Y'all, I can't. I'm sorry, my ADHD. They're, they, and they threw, I was, I was entrapped, Your Honor. They put up a picture of canned cranberries and belly fat and whatever that not bad looking thing. All right. So this is Leslie Van Houten, follower of cult leader Charles Manson, is one big step closer to freedom. A Los Angeles AP. California's governor announced Friday he won't ask the state Supreme Court to block parole for Charles Manson follower Leslie Van Houten, paving the way for her release after serving 53 years in prison for two infamous murders. In a brief statement, the governor's office said it was unlikely that the state's high court would consider an appeal of a lower court ruling that Van Houten should be released. Governor Gavin Newsom is disappointed, the statement said. More than 50 years after the Manson cult committed these brutal killings, the victims' families still feel the impact, the statement said. Van Houten, now in her 70s, is serving a life sentence for helping Manson and other follow followers in the 1969 killers, killings of Leo Lonbianca, a grocer in Los Angeles, and his wife, Rosemary. Now, if you've deep dived into this, you know that the LaBianca murders were kind of just random and they wanted to make it look witchy to get one of their fellow male cult members out of a murder he totally did and was convicted for. So I don't have to say allegedly, <clears throat> but um, the Tate and uh, Folgers and Sebring murders were all a case of mistaken identity because Charles Manson couldn't get a Beach Boy to uh, buy any more of his songs because he was a dirty, stinky hippie. Well, dirty, stinky cult leader. Anyways, the man did not shower. All right. He had the crazy eyes. I don't know why anyone followed him. Van Houten could be freed in about two weeks after the parole board reviews her record and processes paperwork for her release from the California Institution for Women. In Corona, her attorney, Nancy Terrialt. Look, y'all, I'm sorry. I, I need phonetic spellings. Said she was recommended for parole five times since or 2016, but Newsom and former Governor Jerry Brown rejected all those recommendations. 
However, a state appeals court ruled in May that Van Houten should be released, noting that what it called her extraordinary rehabilitative efforts, insight, remorse, realistic parole plans, support from family and friends, and favorable behavior reports while in prison. She is thrilled and overwhelmed. Look, I'm not going to say it. Um, her lawyer said. She is just grateful that people are recognizing she's not the same person that she was when she committed the murders, she said. After she's released, Van Houten will spend about a year in a halfway house learning basic life skills, such as how to go to the grocery store and get a debit card. I mean, honestly, it would be like that thing in um, Shawshank Redemption where I want to call him Smiley, but I know that's not his name. He gets out and the world has just changed so drastically. I, I can't imagine being inside while, you know, the wall fell and the Iranian hostage crisis. And then, you know, the hockey game where America won against Russia. And then, you know, Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton and Barack Obama and just all the different things that have happened. I mean, we went from pagers to, you know, cell phones that were the size of a brick to cell phones that are getting bigger every day, but are thin and can be a mini computer. I mean, I just, look, y'all, I am totally split on this one. Part of me is wanting to, you know, be a better person, be a Steve Gosney on a hill and forgive her and be grateful for the power of redemption. And the other part of me is like, you know, God, God smote some people. I'm just saying. She's been in prison for 53 years. She just needs to learn how to use an ATM machine, let alone a cell phone, let alone a computer. Well, her attorney can't make a sentence either. This is awesome. Van Houten and other Manson followers killed LaBiancas in their home August 1969, smearing their bloods on, blood on the walls after. Van Houten later described holding Rosemary LaBianca down with a pillowcase over her head as others stabbed her before herself stabbing the woman more than a dozen times. My family and I are heartbroken because once again we're reminded of all the years that we have not had with my father and, my father and stepmother with us. Corey LaBianca, La Lino LaBianca's daughter, told the Associated Press in a telephone interview Friday, My children and grandchildren never got the opportunity to know either of them, which has been a huge void for my family, said Corey LaBianca, who is 75. The LaBianca murders happened a day after the Manson followers killed actress Sharon Tate and four others. I hate when they do that. It was Jason Sebring... Um, Abigail Folger, and crap, another guy. Dang it. Now we've got to look that up because I feel like he should also be. It is once again a duct tape and holy water. Uh, production round here. Okay, so Gary Hinman was the musician that the one guy killed. Um beginning of this whole shenanigans and in order to get him out of prison because in charlie's mind you were totally going to get him out of prison if you committed other crimes he wanted to go back to the house of let me get this um really weird looking thing off here let me share the screen with the victims so they can get some you know recognition because a lot of times we, you know, Charlie Manson, I mean, he's a, he's a weird, crazy person who got little people to, um, you know, people to do crazy things. He was able to target, you know, people that were broken and, you know, he had a terrible childhood, which doesn't really excuse everything because people that have terrible childhood tend to, you know, be okay. I mean, most of us do. But it's just one of those stories that you just, you peel it back and peel it back and it's just like, good night, nurse. It's a lot, a lot of us, it was our first, you know, true crime thing, or at least for me it was. So 
Charles Manson and his followers, known as the Manson family, were responsible for the murders of at least nine people in 1969. The known victims of the Manson family are Gary Hinman, a musician who was killed on July 25, 1969, Stephen Parent, an 18-year-old who was shot August 9, 1969, outside the home of actress Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate, a pregnant actress who was stabbed to death on August 9, 1969, with four other people in her home. Abigail Folger, a coffee heiress who was stabbed to death on August 9, 1969, in the Tate home. Uh, Wojciech Frykowski, a friend of Tate who was stabbed and shot to death August 9, 1969. And J.C. Bring, a celebrity st- hairstylist who st- was stabbed to death August 9, 1969. So... I feel like, okay, we got to talk a little bit about, you know, true crimey stuff, but we also got to, you know, honor those people. So it looks like she will be getting out. Again, guys, I am just, I'm torn. I, I want to be a better person and totally go with, you know, maybe she's changed, but can some things not be forgiven? I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments, let me know. And I will hope to see you guys in a little bit. I'm doing uh, Zachariah Anderson day one at 7 Eastern on July the 8th. So if you are in the future, go back and rewatch. That would be awesome. I'm glad to see you all here. Like you lots. And I'll see you again.